Okay. I do my glasses for this too. Uh, uh, look, I just been uh, watching some uh, on the internet, on my device. I've been watching uh, some uh, on contact. You know, uh, so I almost said uh, uh, Chris Hayes. Uh, Chris Hedges um, was interviewing um, Matt Taibbi. They're those two powerhouses right there, and they're doing a little bit of, you know, a little bit of history. Like I'm in media, so I know the history of media. So let me just, so it got me to thinking, right? And so let me just go over some of the points they went over, and then I'll fill in some of my own points, so you can see they, they, they were, well, back. Let's start from the beginning, of, the beginning of the country. You know, the pamphleteers. You know, um, uh, uh, almost back then when they were putting out like pamphlets. You know, the, your uh, what's my main man, um, Thomas Paine. Uh, your, your Benjamin Franklin's. They put up pamphlets, right? And that went all the way through the Civil War, whatever it is. And then you had, then you had some, let's call it journalism happening too. But journalism were like everybody, you know, especially the Wild Wild West, they go out there and make up stories. Journalism, what can we say? Um, and then and then they had this period, I call it, I call it the I.D.B. Wells period, you know, just in my brain, because that's, even though it was before then, you know, Mark Twain was doing this stuff like that before her. But the point is, it was the advocacy journalism, and they would, you know, what they did. And then you had, then you came to, here's where we start to change. Then we came into to the Hearst Empire, the William Randolph Hearst. And that's what, I, I was at his place in San Simeon or something like that in California one time. It was a, tour. It was a very strange. It was a huge house, palatial estate, blah, 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 whatever. Anyway, um, a little tour. Um, and with Hearst, you know, that's when you had, you had a little yellow journalism there, but then you had it where uh, he's, this is what, uh, uh, Matt Taibbi was explaining, and and, uh, and Chris was uh, the Reverend was, uh, Hedges was, was was explaining, was that uh, uh, then you had basically, you know, he had this idea instead of having this all these points of view and people going to different points of view, he just have something that would sort of cover everything a little. Let's call it milk toast. Let's call it me a medium kind of thing. And so everybody, and so that's what he did, and that was his great success. And then of course he. You know the whole, the whole. Bring, don't worry about the war. I'll make a war. Just give me the pictures. The whole thing. So you had this journalism as using as, 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 as manipulation. A little bit of propaganda there. Of course, propaganda hit. Of course, propaganda hit big time. But uh, was was it Walter Wilson promised not to be in World War One? Then it blah, blah 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 and all the rest of that stuff. And, and they changed it. Then they got they got the uh, PR people on on board. Uh, PR meaning public relations people. The advertisers on board. Or the people that do propaganda for advertising. And then the rest is history as far as journalism goes. And that sense, that sense. So, so let me call the thing that's William Randolph Hearst and and before. Let's call it the paper, uh, paper journalism. It's not paper, paper. It's not like paper. When we use paper as the medium. Let's put it that way. And then of course radio came along. And then you had this whole thing where uh, again it was free. Radio was free. You didn't have to pay for it because the paper had you had to cut some wood. You had to do You had to party people. Da, 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 da. But then, but what happened with radio? They basically what radio did was basically take the stuff. From the, the that was written and read it on radio, so they weren't really journalists in that sense. That they were like you know readers, uh, uh, presenters, as we say here in South Africa, as they say here in South Africa. So you have radio, and plus you know everybody would gather around, blah 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 blah. Okay, and the plus you know, radio came very popular in world and uh, during the depression because again people didn't have money. Radio was you know gather around. That was your entertainment, right? Then. Uh, and and I won't get into. I'm gonna leave movies out of this for a second. Okay, well I'm gonna leave it out altogether. And then, and then, uh, and then right after radio, then you have right in the early '50s, then you had started having TV. But again, the TV was doing the same thing with radio. It was copying radio, which was copying the print, it was copying paper. So you, so you basically get yeah 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 radio copying or, or or going on the on the heels of print of of paper. But radio was actually copying paper, or their resource was paper. Then you had TV, their resource was radio, which was actually paper. You see, so you had to still paper was still going real, real, real strong. It isn't too late, and so I, I call this this early TV period to about till about say the the, the uh, mid mid eighties. I would call it yeah, about the mid eighties, late late seventies, mid eighties. I call that uh, TV um, uh, or journalism proper. You know, that's when you and you had all the all this forces came together. Probably the advertising, even though the the, the big papers and the concerns were into the advertisers, they were doing things for the advertisers. So the, the journalists on the ground, they were being still being journalists. Now here's where things sort of changed too, and uh, actually in the 70s, I can say maybe even late 60s.
You have these serious journalism, and you have the, you know, and, and your, your journalism programs, your, your, I'm sorry, your news programs were your news program, your TV, your, your entertainment program was your entertainment program. Everybody knew that news didn't make any money, so the entertainment was supporting that. But then after after your reporting, like you're a reporter back behind the desk, and you, that's times these stories are depressing to you. So somebody comes up with a bright idea, hey, at the end, since you get, let's get a little break and let's give us, and let's give a little human interest kind of thing, you know. Uh, 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 you know, ma ma man bites dog, <laughs> or you know, some some humorous thing just to put the edge off. You know, so the entertainment now is coming into 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 the TV presentation, okay, and then of course, um, then 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 the next I call that that's the first indication that journalism or or the way reporters were doing this was changing because then then they start hiring people just for just to, uh, I'll leave that out of it. Okay, the next big thing in my brain, I, it was it, uh, it, this was in the seventies, I guess. I'm not sure. Was it Dan Rather, whoever it was, that were that was playing tennis with Nixon? I think it was tennis. When, whenever that time when when the journalism, his tennis buddy was the sitting president of the United States, that's when you knew it was all over, Pfft, done. Remember, at that time you didn't have a lot of women in journalism too. Then, then, so, 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 now we're still in this TV era. Now, with this TV era, things started to really morph and whatever have you. Because when they put the woman on, when you think of women, think about women in journalism or women in, 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 in print, or you see them, or the most you would see them is that maybe uh, they have the golden, the cars, you know. I always wonder, they always have a woman selling a car, you know, being a model with the car, because the car is a model, the woman's a model, blah, blah, blah. So, in the minds of advertising, in the minds of even, at least old heads of news, uh, a woman is good for well, decoration, you know. So, so when you did have a woman on there, that was that was good. Okay, she was good, and that's that, that's what it was. But then something happened in this, uh, basically in the nineties. I think it was in the nineties, really, in the early two thousands, certainly. But late nineties, early two thousands. Then when you had, then then they were looking at journalism school, whatever, and had all these people going to school for journalism, whatever happened, and they were actually looking for what they could, as a Western standard, a good-looking Western standard woman. That's what that's what they were hiring, right? Then you went, then of course, then, um, and this is still TV. Then of course, um, now TV, and then was morphing over. Now remember, now you had some cable stuff. So people actually the recruiters for TV, they now recruit from the regular schools, but they could also recruit from table for cable for cable. And, and offering up some good-looking people on the table, you know, this was men as well as women were were so-called the standard, the good-looking standard, you know, the square George, whatever, the, the the woman and the women. If you notice, the, especially the Fox, the Fox really got a hold of this. I uh, remember Fox comes from the Rupert Mur Murdoch tradition. How he get started in Australia, he had this thing was page three, page six, whatever. It's different, page three, we had the, the the scantily clad woman, and then we in England they did the same thing with his newspaper. Then he came here with the same reason. So so basically, it's a man kind of or or a man kind of look at this thing. Okay, what I'm saying is all they did was the Fox women. What they did, a lot of leg, lot of leg. And that, and that again, that Western standard of beauty. So now they had all that stuff. Now the other stations had to had to had to do some. You know, and plus, I call it what did I call it here? Uh, extreme. Uh, the, first they had extreme opinions. That's an extreme thing. But but then you have the the extreme legs, and the legs. Uh, um, it was like the, the they were used to like the the World War. What's the World War Two pinups, right? It was a was Betty Grable with the with the long legs that showed the legs and had legs and a rack because you know the breast legs and breast. That's what you saw in fact. Leg, legs and breast. That's what. And of course that leads to upskirt. All the men are looking for the upskirt. She cross across her legs and recross it. You know, uh, allow <laughs> fatal attraction, <laughs> right? You know, and get a little upskirt shot. So he was looking for that. Now, here's where we go. Then things really changed because then we went to, okay, so now we get the digital age. Now, now, so your digital age comes in, but now you have a lot of people in the digital space. But what has happened, think about it, this is where I'm going to end this. The digital space, again, you don't necessarily pay for that, you have some other kinds of dudes. You alright, baby? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so you, have to pay your, you have to pay your dues to the companies that you sign up to. But it's still digital, and there's a lot of digital problems, and, then, and nobody's talking about the deep web, whatever. There's all kinds of things, like all my stuff goes on YouTube, yeah, but it's also automatically, BitChute gets my, gets my stuff, and there'll be a lot of other companies coming around like that. But what we've actually gone back to is basically that era of the pamphleteers, where anybody who can write a little thing. We had a little bit, a little bit in the, in the 90s, we had to call the zines, had the zines, these little 
pamphlet, like a, a three-page thing that somebody would put out, or pick out, and then you know you just hand that out. You know, so now we've we've gone from that sort of concept, from the early concept of anybody can put out a pamphlet, to right now anybody can put out an opinionated pamphlet. Then this shakes up the industry that's basically started, let's say the Hearst the Hearst model, right? So the Hearst model is getting seriously D whatever, and they got to fight against that because that's the, they got to get the app, you know, like that. So. There you go, a short history of the media. I had to bring it to you because it's one of my obligations that I put on myself here. That ADES of the ADOS, the American Descendants of Child Slavery, is brought to you by me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Well, in this case, I know about media.